wish I could swim Like dolphins Like dolphins can swim Though nothing Will keep us together We can beat them Forever and ever How we can be heroes Just for one day How we can be heroes Just for one day Give it up for the beautiful Rachel. So, as you can imagine, this is a little bit of an unusual setting to do this, and it's been a little bit of a uh, challenge to get this all organized. So, thank you for bearing with us, and let's go forward. Today, we celebrate the first glorious anniversary of the information purification collectives. For the first time in all history, a garden of pure ideology where each worker may bloom, secure from the pests of a contradictory force. Our communication of the force is more powerful a weapon than any fleet or army on earth. We are one people, with one will, one resolve, one cause. Themselves to death, and we will bury them with their own confusion. We shall prevail. On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. So, the Apple 1984 advert, when uh, when they made it at the time, it cost a million bucks, and Ridley Scott directed it. And uh, it was considered quite the bold move. Um, but 
in retrospect of what Apple is now, maybe it wasn't so bold after all. Maybe it was something that was absolutely necessary for that company to grow as fast as it did and more importantly, become uh, something more than just a tech company in people's consciousness. So uh, crypto is full of attitude and evolution potential, but it mostly shows in uh, Twitter shouting matches uh, instead of professional advertising at the moment. And I'm just wondering why it is that I haven't seen a normal uh, television advert made about crypto thus far, even though uh, it's not important that it comes out of television. But if you're a guy my age or a woman or even older, it's likely that you've seen tens of thousands of these uh, adverts in this format. And we're very accustomed to getting information about something, especially if it's done with great production value and great communication and you really want to quickly show people who you are and you're arrived. And I'm just wondering that this is something that still doesn't exist for some reason. Uh, so this presentation is about maximizing your competitive edge. Uh, and it's full of abundant opportunities, this whole field, to be the first at doing something. And all of those things always have value. And why I should be the person who talks to you about something like this, uh, this art piece here that you see on the stage and just behind me, it's called The Beginning of a New Era. Appropriately so, because uh, I did it in collaboration with a Bollywood actress called Veena Malik. And uh, at the time, um, it was quite the controversial thing to do because she's Pakistani and she's Muslim. So for her to come and do uh, these six art pieces that comment upon the common origin of all spirituality all over the world, in these nude body painting pieces in Finland was quite the wave. But because our communication was about building bridges and finding what unites us as men and women and what was beautiful about us all over the world, even in the conservative Pakistan, it was very, very well received. Uh, so it's then since been seen on stages like here, uh, the World Body Painting Festival in Austria, and that's the main piece, actual concept of what it's going to look like when we actually get it to uh, have a home someplace. So, uh, needless to say, because of the potential contro uh, controversy of it all, when we release them, just through legacy media alone, and this is the BBC World, the Independent, Times of India, uh, Pakistan Tribune, uh, Vice, even all these channels that, uh, well, my, well, Vice is maybe not so much legacy media, but regardless, the conservative estimate is that it went to about 300 million people, and that's the legacy media alone. And then you had uh, all the viral media, even Deciblitz was actually there when we launched these from London, and they were copied multiple times, and it just went all over the place. So for a 20,000 euro investment, which is what it costs for us to put this together and transport the works to London and do the press release and launch, I think that was pretty good bang for buck. Uh, and as a part of this concept that I've devised, which is called Artevo, I also... Um, uh, put together a new kind of pricing system and how to sell it all because most of my contemporaries uh, Traditionally they limit uh, the physical amount of these works by how many they are Let's say someone just makes eight of those and that's it and that This is maybe 2006 2007. I already had watched many of the documentaries that uh, Enlightened me on the nature of money a little bit more that it was uh, fiat wasn't backed up by gold and uh, the, the whole of the, how the monetary system works and the central banking and everything. So I, I was very interested in these concepts altogether, what money was and, and so forth, as well as at the same time when I uh, had put together this whole concept of what this could be, I was introduced to the idea of uh, the game of chess, the legend of how the game of chess was invented. And uh, I don't have the time in this presentation to go into that, but I, re I suggest that you maybe uh, check that out on Wikipedia because it's a, it's a wild story. But because of these, I thought that how about I start limiting um, the amounts of these works in a little bit of a different way. Like, for example, the first version of that piece that was sold was sold for 10,000 euros. And only if and when, when the first one is sold, will I ever make another one of the flagship series. And that will then be 20,000 euros. And so forth. Only if and when that one sells will I ever make a third one and that'll be 40. And then so forth and it keeps doubling like that. So it becomes uh, rather uh, something limited by its future potential uh, than the material. And uh, I got the two main uh, economic papers of Finland to feature it and uh, hopefully Forbes is next. 
Anyway, uh, art, devo art evolving is the, is the thing that I've, I, I came up with, and it's pretty much this quote by Michael Schwartz is what I really appreciated because he nailed it. He's a professor of history and philosophy of art, and he said that my art is amongst the most integrally advanced in the history of Western abstraction, no small scale, uh, claim, but one backed up by the works themselves. And rather than abstraction uh, as just weirdness, they're driving uh, into, the, into the very essence of who we are as human beings. So uh, I was very pleased that he said that, and I'm very privileged to present this to you here, because in the tech world, uh, something that is called holistic, something that is uh, integral, is a very commonplace name. Not so much in the art world, they're yet to catch up to that. So um, here's where we get to the next evolution, why really it is that I'm standing here on this stage. Uh, a little less than a year ago, uh, a friend of mine and I went for a coffee here in London. And he confessed to me that he's a crypto investor. And he'd been uh, doing this for some time and he just the day before paid himself for the coming year. He gave himself a, a salary, and I know this guy's lifestyle, so it's not modest, so I, was, <laughs> I got quite interested and um, got very quickly updated with him where Bitcoin was. And obviously with my background in having an interest in money altogether, this was what he said next was really interesting to me. He said he'd been trying to find an art piece about and for the blockchain for his world, uh, for his office, for four days and couldn't find anything. And I crash landed into this space and realized that how important it was, what a revolution was. And there was no one to tell the story of the actual revolution. And let's, some of the communication that we often see from crypto, let's face it, is a little dry from sometimes. So I thought maybe I can spice it up a little bit. So my first soft fork was Artevo for crypto, artforcrypto.com. So I started doing it. Like uh, this piece is called the fork and flip, and it's the global battleground of the bull and bear. You could see it as the market, or you could see it as capitalism versus communism. Uh, there's all these, uh, there's the world map is sunk into the background there. And for the sake, because this piece that is here now presented, this is the second of 12 only that are ever going to be made in that format over there. So it has. Uh, basically, at that time when I made it, it was about maybe Ethereum was going to take over as the mother, uh, mother coin in terms of having the biggest market cap because it was the first fork of Bitcoin. So, because it's made here, it's got the London part and the uh, England part circulated. So, I sort of customized it uh, for each stage and each place where I'm at anyway, in sort of way. So, Ethereum is there featured in this one. And, and it's all. Uh, certified on the blockchain as well because one of the biggest problems in uh, in arts is that whether you, uh, are you certain that this is only the uh, amount of works in circulation and how to authenticate it so there's already many blockchain solutions that are coming to revolutionize this field as well and uh, i'm not going to go into those in this presentation because there's so much to uh, cover so uh, i'm going to go through this one quickly because it's the long day and everything uh, so uh, just before the year ended, I was invited by Kino to go to Miami to the Northern American Bitcoin Conference uh, to show my stuff there, to have a booth there, and present what it is that I do, because people thought that you know, it was maybe a little bit exceptional in the space. And I started thinking, well, if I get invited somewhere, I should make the art piece relevant to the place of where I'm going. So I started thinking about Miami, like the legendary skyline that it has, and you know, palm trees and crypto, how does it all work together? Bitcoin is a bit flashy, it's a bit peacocky, it's that kind of, you know, gold all over the place. So I put together the palm tree and the peacock and then the tropical fruit of uh, Bitcoin, as in, as a kind of cute idea that you go to uh, Miami and if you showcase your stuff, you might get to collect the tropical fruit that is out there. But it was still just a little bit too cutesy. So I had uh, seen previously the um, documentaries on Netflix called The Cocaine Cowboys from the 80s and what happened in Miami. And I'm a kid from the 80s, so I saw the Miami Vices and all that stuff. So basically, uh, I started thinking that what's really relevant is a lot of those banks were built during that time magically. Uh, so the skyline, the famous skyline of Miami had actually been built to a large degree by cocaine. And now Bitcoin is coming over and it's transforming those buildings with the code of what it is 
that is there. So I thought, well, that's a little less cutesy. So maybe putting that all together, that's the relevance of Miami that was going on at the time. So that was fun. Um, so the pizza effect. It all started uh, the actual substance coming into this space by a couple of pizzas, right? Uh, so with it, in terms of the most people's minds, crypto is quite abstract, and it gets often accused by a couple of things. And first, uh, it's a sort of, you're a criminal if you use it. So it's the mafia bubble. Uh, or then it's just the bubble, it's a bubble, which is kind of like a safe word for the universities uh, right now that you need a safe space in university. It's, it's like for those who don't really understand blockchain, if they don't want to appear like they're unknowledgeable, therefore they just say like, oh, it's a bubble, it's a bubble. I don't, want, I don't have time to really get to know it, but I don't want to appear like I'm not in the space. So those are the two, two bubbles. So how can um, community service balls would be the thing of how to get beyond these? And what I mean by this is, is getting it more tangible. So even though BP and Coca-Cola are already here, most, most people's minds aren't. And I met so many millionaires in Miami who just didn't know what to do with their money. And they, no one had ever introduced them to the idea that they could become uh, people of substance beyond just ones and zeros. So this became a mission of mine in, of sorts. And uh, since um, maybe in the... Uh, Hell's Kitchen area, where the mafia area in New York, uh, that what the mafia used to do is that they used to drive, let's say it was Thanksgiving, they would bring a big truck there and open the doors and feed people food from the, behind the truck in order to cleanse their image and, and, and so forth. Since we're already in multiple ways being accused of being something that is quite criminal, why not start doing projects like I just realized what Ripple did a week ago, which is that they did this uh, best school day thing and they gave out what was it 29 million to teachers uh, and funded like thousands of teacher projects to make their crypto more like holy shit they're doing something relevant and that that's something that people can get behind so you might not have 29 million but it'll still an idea like for example yesterday I was really happy to see that on Joe Rogan this guy got some uh, got, got some attention because I've been talking about him and to think I think from 2011, this kid of 16 at the time, he came up with a device and how the oceans can clean their own uh, uh, plastic out of, with their own wave power, that the, the, his invention machines could clean up the oceans. And I'm sure you guys have seen all of these videos on Facebook where our oceans are full of plastic, the fish eat all of that plastic and we eat the fish and then we get man boobs and no one likes that and you know, so forth. So maybe you want to go out and support that guy and make an advert about it. Slap your crypto logo on the fact that you helped this guy clean up his oceans. Because crypto is international and many of our problems demand international solutions and our governments are not taking responsibility for cleaning this shit up. So we could, right? That would be pretty awesome, I think. So here's me confessing my ignorance. The blockchain moves way too fast for anyone to know everything that is going on. So if someone has made a television advert and I'm not aware of it, I apologize. But I think I'm safe to say that no one's made one that is as striking as the Apple one to begin with. Uh, so uh, courage is the medicine. To be the first at something. I mean, Ridley Scott and his production company is just around the corner from here in Soho. If you've got the funds, go and knock on his door and say, hey, what can we do? Uh, that's what I would do if I was Ripple or, or someone else who had the means of, do, uh, of doing that. And I actually wouldn't mind directing that shit, so that would be cool. Uh, so my passion is virtual reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and content. I'm not doing it just for the, for the hashtag buzz. I really want to see the next evolution of art and how we can uh, not only democratize the space, but make it somehow more relevant to people again. But uh, I don't think at this point it really pays uh, any of us if I start to talk about that because we really haven't even adopted the legacy media tools for us to communicate our space to the general uh, audience. And even though the uh, why AI does what it does interests me a great deal, and there's one in the, in, in the streaming audience in, in particular that uh, this is dedicated to that I hope to solve a part of this problem, it's really cool. Uh, I, I thought it's maybe a little bit more useful to think about uh, and talk about uh, uh, of how to learn to walk before running. Because essentially, even oil paints are technology. We don't really think about oil paints as, uh, as technology because it's such an old thing, but it really is that. 
And uh, I'm doing my best to make paint relevant to this thing and start really from the scratch and start building block by block of how to, oh, that was a pun, I didn't, wasn't intended, <laughs> but how to, how to really start um, adapting all that we already know it, from storytelling with the devices that we already know. So uh, a part of this is that Google, when it came with this um, uh, don't be evil statement and all that stuff, maybe, I don't know if uh, many of you here might disagree with that, and for good reasons, but regardless, when they introduced their company, a part of what I really loved about it is that because they were competing for the best talent in the crypto space, they made their environment super um, attractive and inviting for those people who were in the space, the coders. They Basically, if you had R2-D2 and 3PO on the, uh, on, in the office space, you were doing something completely uh, and utterly different. So it wasn't only the paycheck that these guys wanted to attract the best talent to their company for. And, and much like Apple, look at them now. So, um, oh, a, so, a slight sidetrack. Uh, I started seeing these uh, uh, sort of profile descriptions on Twitter and whatever that people said that into crypto before crypto was cool but look at us now you know and my humble suggestion is that we really aren't there yet <laughs> and we're, it's crypto is maybe cool in a in a sense that it's a kind of echo based type of thing for the people who are within the scene but it certainly isn't perceived as that to the outside of it yet so but the Megan Fox effect is real, that you can't really buy culture, but you can support and associate with it. And I'm pretty sure she wasn't paid to do this, but it obviously is a little bit different when she's wearing that shirt than a whole bunch of other people. So. He's so got a toy he man. It was his birthday today. Oh, it's your birthday. In the wow. in America somewhere. Oh, that, thank you. Wow. And I made a viral video about it. Instead of just mooning from his Lambo to Got people, the GoPro set up. Uh, I'm head out. This guy. Let's go pick up some Uber riders. I'm not sure if he was selling it. with Uber man. Or the electric Formula One is starting to be a big thing now. I haven't seen a single crypto logo in, in the sales of, of those cars. Do you have the means? Because of Formula E. Because maybe they like technology first, and then Formula E comes second. So it's very interesting. I think there is a good mixture of, uh, of these two very different sort of fan base. Do you know which way I is? Well, my hospital? personal favorite, when Johnny Depp went to the okay. kids' hospital, maybe someone wants to make an updated version of something like this and be the sponsor for projects like these and really My help name the is communities. And I'm, I'm pretty Ken sure that was, How do you do? that was perceived pretty okay. well all over the world as well as those people. Just uh, like you. this girl had been in that hospital her whole life. I like your prison uniform. I like your prison uniform. So that's going to open some hearts to people if you sponsor and be a part of projects like that in this space. Um, so more affordable than Ripple's 29 million, maybe, is that, for example, this is a GIF by a guy called George Redhawk, and he's legally blind, and as he was going blind and he got to know that he's going blind, he started putting together these different morphing techniques and started putting together art that you could basically just put on your screens in your office or something if you were running it on a budget. Uh, I, I'd hesitate to call that a GIF because I, I think that's something profoundly more especially when the resolution is a little bit better. But there's all sorts of creative uh, solutions on what you can do in order to make your whole environment, your communication, and everything that it is to do with your blockchain uh, space more improved. So I do f fundamentally believe that the new Medicis, the new supporters of art and the people of culture are going to be coming from the cryptocurrency space. Because we do have a clean slate of where to start from. and. Uh, this is going to become self-evident to people that this is what we need to do. So whether it's Justin Renz building uh, wells in the Congo, maybe you want to get your uh, Bitcoin logo on the Marvel Studios' next movie, or maybe you want to help find the next U2 because God knows it's time, right? So it's, uh, all of the, that stuff can be a direction of where you're starting to take your company communication uh, so that you become more visible in the space. 
Where I'm going next is uh, my next main stage performance and keynote is going to be at the World Cryptocurrency Conference in Las Vegas. And they say it's the world's largest crypto conference. And uh, it's going to be hosted by the bad crypto podcast guys. And they are, uh, the, the whole idea of this conference is, is that it's going to be a little bit different to what you're usually accustomed to seeing in these things. And this is a big challenge for me to be at this beautiful, massive hotel uh, on a big stage to scale what it is that I do to the next level. And I can't do it alone, nor would I want to, but this is something that I need sponsorship for. And I would like to go all over the world to all of these different conferences to um, do what it is that I do and make it a little bit more lively and uh, give my expertise. That's where uh, 20 art pieces are going to be. And, and I'm just really, really looking forward to this at the uh, end of the year. So uh, some final thoughts. This art piece over here, if you think that Bitcoin is limited, because it's only 21 million, there's only ever going to be 20, uh, 12 of those, and they're verified by the blockchain. So you can do the math of where it is that this is going. Uh, and as well as this one is, uh, that is beyond, I can't actually change the price of that green one because of the reasons what I already told you, it's fixed price. But that one is still more under negotiation from the Venomolic project. But if you do buy that one, it'll be uh, for 24 hours, uh, for 20% off with that off uh, the ETHLDN uh, hashtag code on the site at artforcrypto.com. And I will write about this experience as well as my collectors and my sponsors on NewsBTC where I'm a creativity writer. So that's a part of the package of how this comes from. So thank you very much for your time. I hope this was entertaining and enlightening to you. And that's where you can find my stuff. Thank you. And thanks very much, Stefan, for giving this spot for me. Thank you. Thanks for that. Really, in fact, it's a bit mind-blowing, actually, what you just brought onto the stage. So uh, yeah, bro. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still kind of figuring it out. But I, I really appreciate art and, and the design of different things and, and the way it kind of makes you feel in life. Uh, so I really appreciated what you've just brought to us. And, and you're very right that the crypto space is quite dry sometimes. And uh, this actually livens it up. So well done. And thank you for, for coming here. Thanks very much. One thing, uh, in the crypto space, there's, there's something that uh, we do, or some people do, to keep their crypto secure, um, which some people might know about. Um, but it's basically wrapping a ledger or, or some kind of hardware wallet in bubble wrap, and then taking a nail polish and painting a different kind of design on it, and then you ship it to someone, because then you can't replicate that design, and you know that it's not been tampered with. So it's actually not really a question, but more something that maybe you can factor into um, your future presentations to bring in the kind of ethos of what uh, people are doing currently within the space to, uh, to your kind of presentations and, and maybe bring some bubble wrap on or also maybe get some sponsorship within that space. That's, thanks for that. That's a very interesting idea. I've, I've been thinking about the different kinds of technological solutions that could accommodate all of these pieces or the communication. And I, I just thought that before a really credible company who spend a lot of time thinking about stuff like this and they want to do um, a collaboration with me and they tie themselves to this and they take care of that side, only then will I do it. Because if I start to do it and take care of this kind of work, I, I, don't, I think it wouldn't increase the trust at this point. It needs to be someone who wants to associate with me and be a sort of credible third party in that way to guarantee it. And I think that's when it becomes really viable. But yeah, thanks. Uh, I really like the presentation. Um, I'm a big fan of art myself. Um, but I don't fully agree with you when you say that the cryptocurrency community is just an echo chamber and it's 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 not it's, it's it's scale. Piss someone off. well no, no i mean like it's it's um, i mean i can see where you're coming from but like john mcafee for example he's a coke dealing potentially attempted murderer you know alleged uh, you know, how how do you find that boring how do you find it boring the whole oh, one no, no, coin no, I'm not, I'm not the one saying... coin debacle or das coin or bitconnect or you know, I, 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 I'm so entertained, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Like, you know, I'm, so, I'm so entertained, I don't watch dr drama. 
And I think, um, I think it's wrong to assume that it's a boring landscape. I think a lot of the films, a lot of the media, and a lot of the art, the best art in the future will, will come from this period as well, just on top of that as well. Oh, no, no, maybe, maybe if I can correct back a little bit of what it is that I, I think I said, is that for those of us here in this space who are following the drama and know of people like John McAfee and whatever, for those, they know that there is a cool sphere of crypto and then there's the, the geeky infighting and, and, and all, all that kind of stuff. But for, I was talking more about the, uh, the U2 crowd, the ones who are out, way outside who might have just heard about Bitcoin in passing. And I think that is still the majority of the world's people. Or if they know about Bitcoin, they think, oh yeah, it was something that uh, went up really a lot and was quite interesting but crashed. So don't care about so it's those people who are not yet in that space I think it's not yet the phase where we can say that we are now into crypto and we were in it before it was cool that that was what I was suggesting so maybe that emotionally corrects that say, statement a little bit <laughs> all right thank you very much guys we have to go because the kind host uh, has to close as you can see the show is over and security is going to kick us out in a second thank you so much for coming really appreciate it especially the new members thank ready you. thank you